Hello everyone, uh, this is Sebastian from Resolve and today I'm going to go over how I clean the GR drums here in the studio. So first I just want to say I'm not officially a Resotech or anything like that. This is just simply how I go about cleaning the drums here. So if there's any parts of it you can get out of it that are useful then that's great. Uh, but I just want to make that really clear. Uh, I also included a link uh, on the video for the tech manual for the GR and I highly recommend you review it and look at it before getting into any kind of disassembly of parts for the machine or drums. Alright, so let's get started. Uh, these are the different tools that I use throughout the whole uh, cleaning process. So. Uh, organic vapor mask, nitrile gloves, chem gloves, uh, Q-tips, various screwdrivers, safety goggles is really important. There's also these lab squirt bottles which I find to be extremely useful and you can get them on Amazon for really cheap. Just make sure they're solvent resistant for the type of solvent you're using. Microfiber rags and all that. Uh, here's a list of all those things as well so you can review. Some of it you don't t entirely need but uh, is really helpful to have if you can get it. The anti-static wristband I recommend because I have actually shorted out one of the PCB boards before. Um, I think from static, but yeah, it just stopped working after I had handled it without gloves or the wristband. So I recommend you, you probably use that. And then now let's get into the cleaning. So for this video, I'm gonna be cleaning a black GR3750 drum. And the way I kind of set up this video is that I'm just going to narrate over all the sped up footage that I took. Uh, I put annotation notes as well so you can read along. Um, otherwise, this video would have been like three hours long or something like that. So you can always pause it and review and things like that. So to start, uh, just remove the covers and these two plates. That's kind of like the main starting point. And then I'm going to get into changing up these dip switches on the drum PCB for whatever type of drum you're going to be or whatever you're going to be using the drum for, whether it's black or a color drum. So for the 3750, uh, you just change uh, this dip switch right here, which I'll show in a second. Yeah, so this one, um, and you can pop it up, and now it's a color drum instead of a black drum. The HD drums are different. There's a secondary switch that'll need to be um, considered when if you're changing it from an HD black drum to a color drum. These are the dip switch um, settings. But those two wires, you can actually cut them and splice them and trick the machine into thinking that it's a HD black tube in the machine uh, when it's actually a color tube in there. This is how I organize all the screws and parts and pieces. You can use little cups or Tupperware or whatever uh, to organize it. But a lot of the screws are specific to whatever part they came off of in the drum. So you just need to make sure that you keep track of that. This is a whole drum cleaning station thing that I built and it holds the drum in place while I clean it and fix it, um, change parts or whatever. You don't need the whole thing. Um, I just built it because I was doing a lot of drum cleaning. But you can just use uh, like a $10 masonry tub from a hardware store as sort of like the catch bin for solvent and cleaning solution and stuff like that and then just prop the drum up on uh, just a couple pieces of 2x4 wood or, or whatever uh, to work on it. I forgot to take the master off actually before I was removing the clamp assembly, but I'll take it off in a second. The two back screws of the clamp assembly can be different on some of the different drum models, so just be aware of that. You may need to keep the screws separate and just make sure you put the right ones back from where they came. So to remove the clamp assembly, I just sort of do this twist motion. Uh, you can remove that little back plate as well to get it off a little easier, but uh, I find that it's enough to just kind of do that twisting motion and it comes out pretty, uh, pretty easy. Once you remove the screen assembly, you can put it down on some wax paper or wax parchment paper or even aluminum foil uh, just to keep it from getting ink all over the table or whatever and keep it clean. 
And I just do a quick check for dents to see if I can even just reuse the drum body, actually, because sometimes I've gotten them where they're so badly cracked or dented that I need to order a new one. So, but in this case, it was fine. So now you need a little bit of finesse to remove the rear drum support, the drum body, and the front drum support. You kind of have to just wiggle it a little bit, but be really careful too when handling it that you don't dent the drum body, which I have done before as well, and it just kind of sucks because then you have to get a new one or try to flatten out the dent. So yeah, ink tube housing, it's pretty straightforward. Um, splash guard. Sometimes the screws are really corroded uh, and, and stuck, and so I'll just use a little bit of penetrating oil, WD-40 or something to just help, help uh, unseize them. And I usually always forget to put that splash guard back, so just <laughs> try to remember. So sorry for the shaky video, clip the zip tie, be careful not to cut any of the actual wires. And just kind of let them sit off to the side like that. And then we're going to take the whole pump assembly out of the, out of the frame here. That's kind of it. Uh, it's actually a fairly clean one. Um, I've pulled some out that are just completely covered in ink. So um, I'm going to highlight and circle these two little ink sensor needles in a second. But they're really important to make sure that you don't bend them or damage them and that you keep them clean. Sometimes the ink is actually up on the PCB board, uh, on the little ink uh, PCB board. And it, if it's on that shorter needle, it's going to cause an overflow sensor error. So you just need to get all that really clean. The board itself is dipped in resin, so it's fairly resistant to cleaning and stuff like that. So you, there isn't too much of a worry with damaging anything if you put some alcohol on it and clean it all off. But that's usually what I'll do. I'll use the alcohol, clean it all down, and then um, make sure that that short needle is really clean and that the and none of it's bent or anything like that. Again, another stuck screw. And I just kind of put all these like really inky parts. So the screws, if they're covered in a lot of ink and stuff, I'll just put them in a little uh, plastic tub so that I can let them soak in some of the mineral spirit and help them uh, help break up some of the ink for when I go to clean it later. I'll mention it as well uh, in some of the annotations, but the screw on the bottom right, the one that I'm about to remove, is actually longer than the other two screws. So you need to remember that when you're putting it back together. So pull out this little diaphragm part for the, for the pump and then soak it along with the other uh, front half of the, the pump unit the, where the ink goes in. and then pop out the piston. And again, I just kind of uh, soak it all down, let it sit while I clean the other parts. So just a lot of scraping, a lot of wiping, a lot of cleaning. So the drum cleaning station that I have, um, 
the solvent circulates through a reservoir and then comes up through this hose and through this parts wash brush, which is really nice because it'll just constantly keep pumping solvent and then it drains back down into the reservoir. So I can really work uh, the rollers and get everything really clean. Uh, but you don't need this. You can do this with just the squirt bottle, the lab squirt bottle, and then keeping the drum uh, in a masonry tub to kind of catch all the solvent. And then you can let it actually sit, uh, the solvent sit over time, and all the pigment will settle on the bottom. And then you can pour the solvent off the top into another container and then just reuse it. So just working the whole thing, trying to get as much of the ink out as I can. You can drop the whole uh, roller assembly out of the frame too to clean all the parts uh, if you're trying to do a super deep cleaning, but I, for the purpose of this video, um, I'm not going to get into that because for the most part, I find that I don't really need to go that far with it. So this little spring part, uh, I get it stuck all the time, but <laughs> you can use a zip tie to uh, zip those two parts of the spring together to, to keep the, the tension set when you remove that bracket, it makes it a little easier too. There's a little metal bushing um, that you wanna make sure you don't lose. It's really important and it will fall off if you're not paying attention. So the belt, uh, I wouldn't use mineral spirits on it because it will, um, it will, will uh, damage it potentially. So this ink driving shaft is really important. It what back spins ink onto the squeegee roller and this little lock screw right here. I always make sure that it's tight because I've had a couple instances where it becomes loose and then it no longer back spins the ink onto the roller. And so you'll get the situation where you're printing and then all of a sudden there's no ink coming out of the drum and actually printing, but then there's also no errors on the machine. It just will keep printing, but no ink is coming out of the drum. And that's because all the ink is stuck on top of that, that ink driving shaft. So just make sure it's, it's uh, tight. And then I just use a lab squirt bottle. I remove the, the little tube inside the squirt bottle so I can turn it upside down and use it. And then I just kind of uh, spray all the little, um, corners and nooks and crannies and stuff and just try to work all the ink out of everything and then it, you know i get it pretty clean and I'm, I'm happy with that so i'll just move on to the next part yeah these two ink blocking plates you don't have to do it necessarily now you could have done it before too uh, i just always seem to forget to clean them and then i remember at the last minute so put this back, make sure that the shaft locks back into the, the other hole on the front of the frame as well. Again, don't forget that little metal bushing. So I'll usually just hold the bracket in place and then use a screwdriver to pull the spring up over it. Or again, you can just use a zip tie to hold those two pieces of the, of the spring together. I just add a little bit of oil if needed to the bearings and stuff. You don't want them to be sitting in uh, the solvent. So I'll just work that oil into all the moving parts. And this part, you know, I don't know how, you know, if you really need to do it per se, but I always do uh, just in case, because sometimes I've had it where uh, flakes of rust will drop down off of that, that part and land in the ink and cause block, like ink blocking on the squeegee roller. So I try to get it as clean as possible. cleaning out the, the pump frame here or the mounting bracket, whatever you want to call it. So all those parts that I put off to the side that I had soaking in solvent, I'll, I'll clean them now. All the little screws and pieces off of the pump unit.
And then just try to work all the ink out as best you can. Q-tips work really good. The lab score bottle is really helpful because you can spray uh, into all the little crevices and stuff. There is uh, some plastic and rubber in this part in particular, especially the, the O-ring that helps seal it to the other back half of the pump. So when you're done cleaning anything with rubber or plastic or anything like that with the mineral spirit, just make sure to spray it and rinse it down with uh, alcohol afterwards so you don't leave any solvent residue on there. Because the mineral spirit will cause some of the rubber to expand and it also can deteriorate some of it. This piston as well, there's like a little O-ring, like a little rubber O-ring collar on the front of it. And you'll also want to rinse that with alcohol afterward to make sure that uh, you're not leaving any solvent on it. The ink distributor, there's two different versions of it. Some have these little uh, hooked ends or whatever that kind of redirect some of the ink. Um, and it's kind of all over the place. I've opened drums up where they're there and then they're not there and it doesn't seem to be particular to a model drum, but I just remove them. Um, you can just pop them off. There's a screw that holds them each in place and you can just take them off and uh, do this cleaning process and put them back on if you want. I usually just leave them off, but, um, and I haven't had any problems with that. So we're going to put the whole pump assembly back together now. So again, just make sure you rinsed all that with alcohol before putting it back in. And same with that little uh, O-ring and some of those rubber parts as well. Just make sure you rinse them off. So again, this is that thing I was talking about where one of the screws is longer than the other two so just make sure you put the right one where it goes so that bottom right is going to be the longer of the three screws That Allen screw has some washers on it as well, so you just want to make sure that those washers stay in the right order that they came off in as well when you're putting it back. And you might need to jiggle it and kind of wiggle it around a little bit to get the screw holes lined up, um, but it's not too difficult. And then, yeah, just put the four screws back in. I just pointed to where that secondary switch uh, normally lives on the HD drum, the HD black drums. So you can actually just remove that too entirely uh, if you want. And then when it goes, when it, where it connects into the PCB board in the front, if you cut and splice those wires, um, you can trick the machine again into thinking that it's a uh, HD black tube in the drum when actually you can just have a color drum in there. Again, those, those two needles, just make sure they're clean and then they're not bent or damaged or anything like that.
I had actually pulled off the, the wires just so I can I can clean a little bit around that connector. So just make sure you put that back if you pull that off. And that's it. That's the the whole pump assembly. It's all clean, ready to go. You can do this same thing in that masonry tub. Uh, if you pull the drum out of it, you can put the drum body right in there and then just use a, a solvent resistant brush of some kind and just scrub down the whole drum body. And then I use a lab squirt bottle to work into that ink blocking sheet area. You can remove that ink blocking sheet entirely if you want to for a really deep clean or if it's uh, the adhesive would come off or something like that because of the solvent. And uh, if you use a double sided 3M tape, you can put the ink blocking sheet right back on the drum after you're done cleaning it and it works totally fine. And I've done that a few different times. So now uh, I'm going to clean the screen assembly, and this is sort of the setup that I've created for cleaning it. Um, but you can do this right on top of some wax paper as well. So if you lay the screen assembly down on top of some wax paper um, or just a plastic sheet that's solvent resistant of some kind, then you can just uh, spray it down with a little solvent and wipe it all down clean. And uh, just be careful not to wrinkle the screen assembly because if you wrinkle it really bad it can leave uh, lines and stuff in your printing. Typically when I put stuff back in or back in place, what I'll do is I will put all the screws in initially um, and then have them semi loose. And then once all the screws are in, I'll go around and do the final tightening on all the screws. That way uh, you don't tighten one screw just to find that the holes might be misaligned on one of the other areas where you're putting a screw back in. Um, so it just helps so that way you don't potentially strip down, strip any screws or anything like that. So this whole optional step thing, there's different ways of doing it and you can do it at different steps in the cleaning process too. You can do this before you actually start cleaning the rollers or the inside of the pump if you want to help free up some of the ink first. Um, but this uh, technique with the bottle full of solvent is a way that I used to do it uh, and it works fine. Uh, but I found that if I just remove the parts wash brush and connect the hose from the drum cleaning station directly to the uh, ink intake and then just uh, turn it on and turn on the motor, I can just walk away for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and it will uh, pump and flush solvent through um, the whole thing and really, really clean out every bit of ink inside of the pump. But for the purposes of the video, um, I just did the older technique that I use with the ink tube. So again, it's an ink tube full of mineral spirit and I'll just run the pump and motor independently with that adapter and it'll just flush out any stuck remaining bits of ink and stuff. And you might need to do this a few different times. Um, and you'll find later in the video too that uh, I kind of cut corners with that. I only ran it through a little bit for a few minutes and I actually ended up having a bit of ink still coming through, old ink coming out of the out of the pump. So I had to go back and kind of clean it a little bit more. But And so here I just put some cardstock under the ink distributor, turn the pump on with the new ink in it and it'll flush out the old ink. Um, and you can run it however long you need to. In this case, uh, I used uh, the amount of ink that I pointed to, 
the tube holds about 36 ounces of ink and in total once I was done fully converting and cleaning the drum I used about six and a half ounces of ink or so so uh, normally it's probably less but in this case because uh, I was going from black to this really light color blue um, so you could see that line that is uh, like a little ink block that happened so I used the feeler gauge to kind of swipe the stuck little bit out from between the rollers um, and this part's really important again that lock screw make sure that's tight so that that ink driving shaft is back spinning ink onto the squeegee roller I replace the ink housing um, as for the feeler gauge uh, you should probably also check the the gap between the doctor roller and the squeegee roller um, and it has a very specific uh, distance that it needs to have and you can use the feeler gauge or the thickness gauge to to help check that and it's inside of the tech manual which again i included in a link on this video um, i would just read and review that um, i didn't really go through that with this because i'm just trying to show the cleaning of the drum and just the basic assembly and disassembly so but if you want to review that uh, yeah please do So you just need to um, kind of work it around a little bit, make sure it lines up and that that, um, that little slot or whatever on the drum front drum support locks into place on the, into the drum frame. And then just slide the drum body back on, align the, the three screw holes. And then the same with the rear drum support, right? Just gonna slide it back on, make sure everything lines up in place uh, pretty well. And you can actually do this without doing it directly onto the drum. And what I mean by that is the front drum support, the drum body, and the rear drum support. You can actually put those together independently off of the drum frame and then slide the entire thing back into place if it's easier. So I start with uh, these four screws. Um, that connect the drum body to the drum supports and I do them loosely again. So none of these screws are tight right now around the, the drum body. And uh, as I mentioned in the annotation, make sure that the larger opening is faced toward the bottom of the drum. Otherwise, if you, you can screw it back in place and have that position be wrong and then you go to put the drum in and it won't let you lock the drum into the machine. So just make sure that you have that aligned properly. I kind of struggle with this part sometimes and it's definitely easier to do if you do remove the ink blocking sheet entirely and then retape it in place with the 3M double sided tape but you just kind of work it into the area there uh, and then putting the screen assembly back on again be careful not to wrinkle it So with the, the clamp assembly, I'll flip that um, clamp part back and then just sort of twist it into place. Uh, and it might take a couple tries to do that, but it, it'll go in um, without having to disassemble it any further. And then the four screws. Uh, and remember that some of the models, the screws in the rear are different than the screws in the front. So make sure you put the right ones um, into their corresponding areas. And then when I'm all done, I just wipe everything down with alcohol, do any final little wiping and cleaning, taking off any uh, ink residue or anything like that. Re 
connect those uh, connectors. And when I zip tie it, I zip tie the wires towards the front of that tab um, because you want to be careful. There are little plates um, that are connected to the uh, front drum support that are used to let the drum PCB know if it's an A4 drum or an A3 drum and when to start and stop making the master. So those little plates, they kind of stick out and I'll show that in a second. Um, but those can catch on the wires and tear the wires. So you really want to make sure that um, everything rotates. Yeah, see that plate right there? That can catch and hook on some of the wires. So just make sure that everything spins and rotates freely and nothing is uh, obstructing anything. And then putting the covers back on. So now I'm going to put the tube in and uh, make a test print and run some test prints to make sure that there's no uh, residual dirty ink or anything like that in there. And as I mentioned earlier, I could have done a better job cleaning out the pump assembly, so I wasn't really quite happy with the results. I mean, it printed okay, but I could see a tiny bit of residual ink um, in some of the areas of the drum. So I did the test print, checked it, and wasn't happy. So now I'm showing how you can actually fix that pretty quickly. So just removing those three Allen bolts and the two front plates and covers in the front of the drum will let you slide off the entire drum body assembly. So the drum supports plus the drum body, the clamp, the master, the screen, all that. You can just slide that out all in one unit to go back in and fix anything or check anything or correct anything, anything you might want to do. So I wanted to get it a little bit cleaner. So just sliding the whole uh, assembly off. You can see it's just one part and it'll go back on the exact same way as well. So I just went in and um, cleaned out some of the, cleaned out the pump a little bit more. And you know, this is the end result. So from a black drum to this light blue color, um, you know, I think the conversion went pretty well. Uh, in total, it usually takes me about three hours or so, and that's with my drum cleaning station. And, uh, you know, I can get it clean enough to where I don't have any residue or residual ink coming through. And uh, so in total for this cleaning job that I did, I went through about four masters, about 80 sheets of paper, and about six and a half ounces of ink. And I went from the black drum to the light blue. So. Overall, I think it was uh, successful and I'm happy with it. And that's just how I clean the drums. There's definitely a lot of different ways you can approach some of these different steps. Um, and I implore you to definitely leave a comment. Uh, if you have any uh, interesting techniques or ways that you do it, I'd love to hear about them actually, because I'm always interested in improving the process. So uh, please comment below. Uh, let me know uh, if there's any other videos or things like that in the future you'd like to see. And uh, again, thank you so much for watching and uh, really appreciate it. And good luck out there with uh, cleaning your drums.